One sequence Hulk meets and fights three dogs that they've been trained to go after uh, Betty Scent, and they're trying to get her. And Hulk is there, thank God, at the right moment to protect her from them. Then we have close shot on 16 of the three dogs. This is the first time we see the dogs. The first meeting about the dog fight, I think, was uh, about a year ago. And uh, Dennis and Colin and I went down to LA. And there was a huge roundtable discussion, and Aang presented the sequence in huge, thick boards. 200 shots, it's probably 15 or 16 million dollars worth of CGI animation, three dogs, a guy, whatever. I don't know how much this is going to cost. A lot. The producers and I were all giving each other's looks like, who's going to tell them that there's absolutely no way we can do this, you know, but we all kind of tried to remain calm. It will be much faster than what it is. <laughs> That was the constant battle of being able to create enough space for Aang that he could create his movie, but at the same time trying to put it in some realm of reality. Well, I think one thing is obvious, we can't do all of this, so. And it took a lot of meetings, and it took a lot of boiling down to actually what are we going to do. It ends up we only got to do a quarter of it because that would be too expensive. I didn't know what cost what. <laughs> That's a good discipline for me because I have to take the best shot. So whatever make a little movie, they're the best shots. Page one, chapter one. So Betty hears something outside and she takes the flashlight. So there's a sequence where Betty discovers Hulk at the cabin and he steps out and there's this very tender interaction. And to establish the eye lines, they have this like pole that looks like, you know, what you'd skim a pool with, you know, it's like retractable kind of pole, and they've got this cardboard cutout, literally cardboard cutout, of a Hulk head. And some guy stands around with this head on a stick, you know, and says, okay, well, at this point, it's that high, and then it's here, and so they do that, and it's for me to kind of get a reference of where it's gonna be, and then, they, then I don't even have that, then they take that away when we shoot, you know? And so we shoot the background plates with the actors acting to a big cardboard cutout of the Hulk's head or something. And I'm always there when that's done to remind everybody of how big he is and where the eye line is and you know what should be moving around when he walks in front of something. Three, two, one, action. And then being on wires and okay, the Hulk's picking you up. So, but in real life, what's, what's happening is I'm standing there doing sort of mime 101, you know, going like, Hulk's picking me up now and you know. That was partially done as keyframe animation, partially based on video reference, and partially done based on uh, motion capture of Aang. And action. Aang enjoyed being in the motion capture suit and enjoyed being the Hulk. So when he felt that he wasn't getting what he really wanted and he couldn't express it, he would get in the motion capture suit and go, this is what he should do, you know, sort of where Hulk is looking deeply into Betty's eyes, having a very subtle change of, of emotion or mood. It turned out that the motion capture was a good way to capture kind of the essence of those subtle interactions. It's very hard for some reason to bring the realism of how he moves, the physics. So we need some kind of blueprint. The quickest way to do it is me putting on a suit. Dog fights are designed to give us a good chance to show the visceral side of the Hulk. Aang kept hammering it home that he did not want the fight to look choreographed. He wanted it to look very visceral and primal and out of control. We just poured over reference tapes of dogs attacking each other. We noticed very quickly that there's a randomness and a messiness to the animals that we were wondering if there's any other way we could capture it. I had talked to Seth Rosenthal about dog motion capture. No, go back down, go back down, sit down. Our stage coordinator, Bill Telesti, found a dog trainer by the name of Joe Lucero, who reads his own dogs and trains them in a way in which they retain this kind of wild character, um, but are still very, you know, very controlled and contained. And we put all these little markers on this poor dog, and, uh, and we had him do a bunch of exercises to really study the dog motion. 
the dog had done a really good job and so Joseph gave it the chew toy and he started wrestling with it. And then all of a sudden he fell down and him and the dog were rolling around. And Colin and myself looked at each other and went, wait a minute, this, <laughs> this, this could look really cool if we amp it up. So we came up with the notion of putting Joe in the motion capture suit to do a few shots where Hulk has to kind of roll on the ground and, and roughhouse with the dogs. And it looks really vicious, but you know, they feel it's very playful. And it wound up being fantastic, and, and Ang was thrilled with what we could get from the dogs. Although, these dogs are six feet tall, and they're as big as horses, and they don't actually move like a real dog, so there's some adjustments that have to be made along the way for that, too. A lot of it had to be blended with, with real keyframe hand animation. Rolling. We're rolling. And action. One. Two. The raw result of the motion capture is 3D data from the markers. And that data has to be mapped onto a character in the computer. And we have a few different techniques for driving a skeleton. Once we turn the mocap data over to the animators, they have a whole host of tricks that they use to make the, the shots look good. When I take the first stab at it with the animators, we'd often err on playing a monster. And we learned very quickly it wasn't a monster. We would stomp around and we would pretend like we're big, heavy guys and we'd lift things up and we'd always overemphasize certain motions. And Ang would say, you know, this isn't WWF wrestling. Uh, this, is, this is the real deal. If you're gonna pick something up, you know, violently, just pick it up. Don't play it up for the camera. As far as I know, no director has ever put on the motion capture suit and uh, played a, a key role. And so it was a unique experience to have Ang come in, direct himself. He's very intense. He gave a lot of performances where he would just explode with the rage of the Hulk. Sometimes we were a little startled by, um, just by his intensity. Almost all the time, Aang would go for the sloppy performances, the unexpected performances. So anytime things were overly clean, he would say, no, no, that looks like animation. And so really the goal here is to not make it look like animation, to go for all those imperfections that come out of real life. We try to get distinct personalities out of each dog. We have Lily, the, uh, the poodle. She's the leader, and she's kind of fidgety and very hyper, very on it. We have a giant mastiff. He's very bear-like and very thick in the way he moves. And then we have Sammy, the pit bull, and he's very lion-like. He's all about his jaw. So in addition to getting realistic dog movement, we're also trying to make sure they're not just simply generic dogs. We want to come to the theater to see something supernatural. It's a very, very painful, long process about putting all the little detail. We have a whole team that just simply does the paint. Uh, every little pore and every little detail, that's their job. Another team that's just sculpting the muscles. My job is to integrate the Hulk and the dogs into the background elements. We'll add in very subtle, but still very important, uh, foot debris. The foot debris gives us the sensation that the dogs are kicking up the ground. We also add in the steam for the mouth. In the dogfight sequence, it's supposed to be really cold. And one of the more complicated aspects of the dogs is the drool. The funny thing about drool is every once in a while you get interesting results. This is drool that's a little too gooey. And this is uh, tinsel teeth. And then this is the final render of the drool, which turned out quite nice. These are a few of the more complex creatures that have gone through the ILM fur pipeline. The poodle, for example, has 1.5 million hairs. That's a rough sketch. How long did you think the sequence last? I don't know. I think the flavor of what he originally wanted is still there. It's just uh, a little bit a little bit shorter. I had the greatest time in my life making a movie with those island people. And as a result, we have Hulk fighting the three Hulk dog scene. It was visceral, as terrifying as we can imagine, and it's very satisfying. It's like, uh, well, it's like watching Monster Truck. Kind of fun. <laughs> 
there it's Debbie. Did you know that in the 90s, Michael Jackson actually tried to buy Marvel Comics just so he could play Spider-Man? It might sound like a weird idea, but Stan Lee later admitted that he thought he would have been very good for the part. Who knows how that would have turned out? Remember to click below to subscribe, remember to tap the notification bell, or click on the side for more great content.